Me and my grandparents have come away for a few days to a caravan, so we're going to spend a few days chilling out in the countryside. We're going to crochet some little bits, knit some little bits, and not put too much pressure on myself to make anything massive. And we're going to experiment with colour, texture. I've just knitted a scrunchie. And I'm crocheting the edges and I'm using the Lax pattern from Close Knit. I'll not show you pattern because that's not fair to her hard work. The people are losing an average of seven hundred and fifteen pounds each because wages. I'm back home, and this is project that you've seen me working on. So it's a bag, and when I cast it off, it's actually come out a bit bigger than I expected. It's like. <laughs> probably like double what I was going for but I love the colour work that I've done on it and then I've got little bits that I want to embellish on outside as well as some pockets I'm going to do a square base and then I'm also going to do big straps um, that's going to come from here to here so that'll go round and up and then that'll be bag part to put the stuff in and then I'm going to have another strap going from there all the way back around to the other side i think i'm going to use white i think i just need to balance it out a bit with a plain color because i ran out of this otherwise this would have probably substituted this bit so they're going to be straps i think to lighten it up a bit i think that's going to be a perfect addition for the rim round my straps and round edge at hem at top and then i'm going to use some of this narrow foot base i think because it feels right strong and then I'll probably hold it double with some cotton. Lab, he likes a gift. Well then he doesn't need the gift. You know what, I'm just gonna put all this stuff together in the same pile over here if that's cool. I think I know who this is from. If you have been saying, then it shouldn't be a problem if you... If... Yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay, don't, don't do it please. Right. I didn't want your beautiful face on it. Because. Why? Look at your face. Look at that. You're so pretty. Smile. No. Smile. Stop. Stop. Smile. Look how pretty you are. Look at the sun. You glowing. Atkinson's and I always come back to look at this yarn so I feel like I should take that as my sign to treat me sense some 
I think I'm going to make another bag. And I really like this charcoal colour. It's not something that I'd usually use. But I think I might just get two. One of each. Two. two of these. Super fine alpaca. And I can always dye this with my acid dyes if I want a different colour and end. But I feel like this will look really nice against some bright colours in a bag. These are all like different colours in this line. There's grey, charcoal, all on. And then the cream down there. And that too I think I'll get. All time, bitches. I got this. I got two of these. And then I got some banana chips for Kurt. I got the two alpacas there and then I got a wool and acrylic blend in this lime colour and two pieces of brown felt to line this bag with. Hopefully they're big enough. Did you get pissed off at me last night if I went on live stream? No. People were leaving as soon as they saw it, weren't you? <laughs> really? Yeah. Came for the crochet, stayed for the fast pimple. <laughs> what that? Emily. There's 20, what, 29th anyway, I were in yesterday. Oh, oh Maxi. I'm going for a walk to to res. Are you taking a picture of this? Seasons will pass you by. I got a mug. Meow meow. Look at me. Look at me. Oh. Feeling a bit creative with burnt art and one inspired from working on drops so heavily recently. And I made that bag that I've been showing you in this video. This the slouchy one that the yarn what in that I were carrying around. And I also did some scrap scrunchies as well. I've found that just returning to working with colour and being so focused on how colours interact and talk to each other and ways that I can use different techniques to make colours from other colours and mix them and blend them. So it's basically thinking in the way of a painter how he has his he has his palette and then he puts his colours on and he blends colours into different shades. That's pretty much what I've been doing and I, I think a really nice way to describe knitting and crochet is that the needles are a paintbrush or a pencil or a pen and it just happens that my pens are just a box full of rainbow pens some are gel pens some are watercolour pens some are crayons and they all get deep they all let you achieve a different outcome 
and they all let you learn how to work differently and how to tailor an experience to each specific medium and colour. A big part of knitting and crochet I think is learning how different fibres work and how they all interact with each other um, and how they'll create different shapes, different drapes, different silhouettes and if you think about the painter analogy then a painter uses different paint brushes to get bigger strokes, smaller strokes, different types of strokes, fine, messy and it's the exact same way with needles, different needle sizes and how you're moving that needle or paintbrush as I like to think of them. Me, Kurt and Max have come to Upton Park and Kurt's taking some pictures and Max fucking pissed on me. Max just cocked his leg up and started pissing on the side of my trouser. And then after here I think we're going into town for Kurt to get some more SD cards for his camera. And I feel rough today. I feel rough as a dog. 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 I feel rough. We've just bought two albums. I've got Radiohead King Ellen, So My Life Is Now Complete, and Kurt bought, Kurt bought a job for Jimmy. I can't actually believe it. Oh my god. I'm hoping to do a shoot this weekend for my upcoming garment drop. So I think I'm gonna just start planning it in this, get some reference pictures printed out and stick them in. I forgot I actually wrote this in here. That was for my green and purple dress that I knitted. These silk rods create such a cool texture. They're, they're almost hatched and crisscrossed. But yeah, I think I'll do that this morning and I also need to finish the wedding dress that I've got to do. That needs to be done in about two days. But I've actually got a repetitive strain injury in this left thumb. And it's giving me some right chips, so I've been massaging it with this Arnica balm. And it is working a little bit, but hopefully it does actually go in time for me to get this dress done. Because she needs it by 19th of May to America. So that's about, that's literally two weeks to finish it, send it off and for it to get there. Me. 
this is a sneak peek at my vats that I made the other day for the yarn drop that will be coming up soon. So I'm trying to do at least two of each. So them two pair together. Then this one. But they're not exactly the same. They still look nice together, but I'm not sure if they're going to be a pairing or not yet. And then these two are a pair. These are like... This makes me think of the Caribbean for some reason. So I've got two of each. And all of them are ranging roughly from 40 to 50 grams. But the ones that are not 50 grams, which I think is maybe a purple one. And this green one, I'll be offering, um, I'll be offering a bag of textural add-ins like locks, silks, so that it takes it up to fifty gram. I think I'm gonna make some more bats this morning, just to be a bit of a meditative thing. That's all my supplies. Blending board. Carders. Ooh. That's it. That's all I need. I'm going to spend about two hours just playing around with colour. Doing a bit of blending. And I might watch a film as well on telly. This looks like coffee because of how dark it is, but it's tea. I'm not a very big coffee drinker. Although I do have a coffee if I need a shit because it just flushes your heart right good. I'm ready to make some bats. My boxes are a bit messed up, but basically I have one for roving fibre and just scrap bits of fibre. And then in my other box I have add-ins, so that's silk threads, sari silk, wool nips, uh, tussar silk, mulberry silks, just basically things that are little textural add-ins that are blended into the main base which is the roving. We've got locks, some bamboo fibre, Next. Got some tea silk. So that's that box. So basically what I do is I lay down layers of fibre and I sandwich these in between them and then if I want it a bit more blended, the roving that's on there, so the bat that's on the blending board, I'll take that off and then split it up into smaller parts and then re-blend it. So I'll I'll card it twice. And then that means that the colours will blend more and these will be better set inside. So I don't know what... Oh, that's a big bag of silk of mine as well. I don't know exactly what colour palette I want to go for because I do actually need to do another fibre order because I'm running out of roving. I think I might do that green now. this green with maybe some pink I think. and then I can put stuff in like sorry silk this pink silk would be really nice and I've also got walnuts so I I get all this out and I lay out things that I think will complement each other nicely and I build up my palette and then if I'm just feeling if I'm just feeling spontaneous I'll just grab what's ever in here, take it out and put it in because usually I end up liking it anyway. What I do to start off all my bats is just lay down a first thin layer of roving. So that if I put any little textural add-ins, it'll fall onto this and not at the back of the bat. 
which just means it's sandwiched in there a little bit better. So I put a thin layer of this and then basically what I do is I'll put textural bits on top of this and then I'll do more roving on top of that. So I'm basically sandwiching layers in between the roving or the predominant fibre that you're using. So then once I've got that first layer down, I'll get bits like this. And usually I only want a little bit because the colour definition is quite intense when you're spinning. So I'll put little bits on and then see if I've got any little, little bits like this. That's why I put that first layer down so that when I put my next layer of fibre on, these little wool nips will be sandwiched or stuck in between that bottom layer and the layer that I'm going to put on top. And it just keeps everything nice and intact in there. So I'm just building it up. The colour palette might change a little bit as I go on. I never really know. I just do it intuitively and I work the same way when I'm knitting and crocheting so some silk threads get some of these little green bits in I've got some silks first blend is done so I usually take this off like this sometimes you get a bit of fibre left in blending board but I can just use my card or a needle to just get that up so I'll take this off fully and then I'm left with this rectangular wad of fibre and then It's got layers to it, so I'll split the layers up like this and divide them. And then from here, these, I'll then, I'll just get the strips and then I'll work, I'll work them back onto my board, going in the direction of the fibres so the fibres are facing this way which is what you want to do when you're carding you want all your fibers to be facing the same way so by doing this i'm just blending it again basically friend wants to get into spinning so I'm blending her a little bit of fibre to send to her so she can have a go at it and I'm using some Shetland because Shetland's a bit of a stickier fibre and it's a bit more forgiving than Merino is to begin with and Shetland kind of allows you to focus on getting your coordination down with all the different movements we are having to worry too much about uh, it's snapping as much but then it also obviously at some point it will snap but it allows you to rejoin bricks quite easily so i've just blended i put a layer of shetland down and then got some of this pineapple fiber with some silk in it and then some two star silk just to add a bit of color because i know her color preferences are a bit different to mine and i think she'd like this so I'm going to blend this, make her a little bat, maybe I'll diz it so that she can spin straight from it and it'll be a long piece of fibre. If I diz it, she can spin straight from it rather than if I were to send her this as a bat, she would have to fanny about breaking it up herself. And I just feel like if you're starting out, you just want it 
to kind of build on for you just so you can learn the techniques a little bit i might put some sari silk in as well but i'm just having fun and i really hope she likes it i'm just using this old earring as a day's clothes i don't actually have a proper one so for me doing this it just means that she'll be able to spin from it straight away <clears throat> rather than fannying about splitting it up herself which if you're just starting to spin can be a bit intimidating to do that so it gives me this long strip of roving i'm just gonna do this around the whole board ideally my hole would be a little bit smaller but I'm working with what I've got so you just go round pulling through and then I can go like this for her and then she can just spin straight from that Where's it going? Oh, that joins up today. Oh, okay. I've no idea. I like her outfit. I think he did. Has it worked? How much do you love him on a scale of? Sarah. 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 Like him off Derek. Oh. Guy off Derek, you know that guy who drinks um, a special brew off the carpet. Yeah. Oh, Ryla's putting money in. Oh. <laughs> Tell us which ones is your favourite. Uh, are all these? Yeah. Uh, they're not. Nice. These, well, this one's nice. It's got a bit of yellow and pink oh. in it. Um, I'll like tell you which one. Them, them plants over there, they're nice. Which ones? These ones. Why don't you get one for your room? I've got too many plants. I know where to put them. But I, like, really I really that like them. Water, though, that one's nice. Oh, that's more, more, more round. It's like a get kaleidoscope like when you look at it. You don't need much sunlight. Oh, they look like sea urchins. Six then. quid, yeah, they do, don't they? Six yeah, quid for that? Six quid? Six quid? They cut practices and then they, 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 like, they stitch them together and they grow on top. I love that. Aloe vera there. Mm, Seven yeah. quid. The aloe vera plants grow massive. Have you seen it when they cut them off? What, aloe vera? Yeah, it's like clear inside. Twelve model pattern book and yarn to make this purse. You can crochet it into that thing or not. Crochet for beginners. Crochet for beginners. For girls, eight years and up. For girls, not for boys. This is for strictly for girls only. Oh, look at that little 
Nickel wooded thing. Do you need that? What? I think you'll need that later. <laughs> we'll be back about 10 o'clock. <laughs> Absolute dream spirit has been acquired today. And it cut. Bloody gorgeous. Put it on. You look very nice. Though. New breed. It fits your head perfect. And about. And a rickle top. Or a rickle <laughs> And I bought this so that I can. Show, show them this. So out. that show I can them, rework construction of it. balls at guys on PUBG. Let's get it on. Perfect, oh my god.